Today's project is going to start with this round solar light. First step we got to do, we got to cover it with tape. The reason is we don't want to damage or ruin the front part of this light. Once we got it covered in tape, we got to put a border around it. We can use just some hard paper or anything like that, cardboard, that will circle it up. Tape it and make sure it's snug but not too tight. You want to be able to separate that and give it about an inch to the top. Once we get it covered, go ahead and put some tape on the inside. We don't want any of our sand leaking out. Look at that. Next step, we're going to fill it with sand. You can use any kind of sand or anything like that that will fill it. Play sand also works the best because it also molds to the shape that you want it in. Once we got that covered, go ahead and lay down some saran wrap. About a 12 inch by 12 inch square will work and we're going to fill that also with sand. Once we get a little bit in there, we're going to roll it all up as in and make it into a little ball. Once we get it covered, go ahead and set it on top of our solar light and the sand. Next we got to do, we're going to mix some color into some concrete. I went with a red terracotta look. Pour some water in first, then the color, and then mix it all around. Once you get that, go ahead and add your cement. Now, this is really dusty. Always make sure you're working in an outdoor location. Pour your concrete in just like that and wear gloves. It'll dry out the skin. I hand mix it because it's not that much that we're making. Once you get it all mixed up, it's time to apply it to the light and the sand. Just goop it on there as if it's like Play-Doh. We're just going to cover it. Now, you want to be a little careful because the sand in the bag does move around a little bit. So once you get it covered and smoothed over, don't mess with it too much. We want that to dry like that. As you can see, it's looking like a little tiny rock. I'm going to add what we call the pig nose right on top. It's a little blob that we're going to put on because we need the light to sit on this. We also need it flat, so I grabbed a huge popsicle stick and just rubbed it all up and down just to make sure I get a really nice flat area, about 45 degrees at the top. Once it dries, we got a little rock and look at that. Turn it over and there's our light, but it's backwards. We need to take that out. Just go ahead and pop it out and you're also going to pop out the sand. So pour that out into a bowl, take the bag out, and we're going to also clear all the tape and paper that was inside. Once we get it all cleared out, what we need to do then is we got to install our solar light. See, whenever you put your hand over it, it lights up. So go ahead and just put that in. And because we gave it a little bit of a distance, it moves. We can focus it any way we want. Now it's time to put it where we want it. And this one's going to go in my front garden. I'm going to move some of that bark mulch out of the way, put it in place. And look at that. When you walk up, it just looks like a rock. But I have a surprise. I want to light up my favorite mushroom that's out in front. And watch this, when the sun sets, it lights it up. That way anybody that walks up to my area can see my favorite decoration in the front yard. I have this area in the front of my house that I wanna beautify, but I've got a clean out valve that I kinda of wanna cover up. So I grabbed a bowl from the Dollar Tree and put it over to make sure it fits. Then I went to Home Depot and grabbed some spray foam. Next what I'm gonna do is put the bowl down on a garbage bag and I'm gonna grab the spray foam and start covering all the bowl up, every square inch. Now, spray foam is very sticky, so don't worry. Once you spray it on there, it's not coming off. You wanna cover every bit of that bowl. What that is, that that's gonna cause a cavity in our boulder that we can place over anything that we wanna hide in the yard. And we're gonna go layer over layer. Now, this took about three cans, but I wanna make sure before I put the next layer on that's a little bit dry to the touch just keep placing the foam on now this foam does take a little bit to dry so once you get it on you want to give it about 24 hours and there's the bowl stuck underneath the next step is we got to carve the foam in nature it's not going to just be one big round ball for a boulder so you're going to want to put some edging to it so you can make it as random as you want I like to cut little wedges out of the foam that gives it a little bit of sharp edges, something you can help adhere the concrete to. Now you're gonna shape this all over, twist it, turn it, just make it random. Like on this side, I want a little bit of a sharper edge. And I'm gonna cut that off and it cuts quite easy. Next step, I'm gonna pour some water into a bucket. I'm using cementol. Now, mix a little bit at a time. I probably mix a little bit too much here, but what we're gonna do is mix it and you're looking for not too runny, but not too hard. You wanna be able to shape it 
and use it almost like a clay on top of the foam. Once you got it mixed up, go ahead and just start adding it to the foam. Fill in all the little gaps and everything. It does stick to it, so no worries there. Just go ahead and keep putting it on all over. This is going to be our first layer, and so it can be a little rough. Go ahead and put it all over. Use any bits that fall off. All you're trying to do is fill it in and give that first layer look and just keep smoothing it on. For the second layer, I made it a little more runny because what I want to do is fill in a little bit of the gaps and make the concrete a little bit thicker on there. Just go ahead and smooth it in and fix any little imperfections that you think you could fill. Now, if it looks a little rough, you can grab a chip brush, dip it in some water, and then you can start smoothing out the concrete that you put on. Don't go too rough on it, just smooth it out. That way you can have some smooth spots, rough spots, anywhere you want. Now let it dry, and then I took some black paint, watered it down, and I'm gonna add a little bit of color to the rock. I do live in a desert area, so they're not just gonna be all gray. So randomly use a sponge, just put some black on there. You can go with any color you want. I do live in a desert landscape, so I'm gonna add some brown to it also. Make it look really good. Again, use any color you want. Once it's all colored up, it's time to place it in the yard. Now I'm ready to cover up the pipe that I wanna have hidden, and it's time to go ahead and add some ground cover, and look at that. What a beauty. Just makes the front yard look better, and it looks like an actual boulder. I'm gonna be using this wallboard joint compound that you can get at any hardware store. It's about seven or eight dollars for a tub this size and a little goes a long way. And so you can see it goes on really easily. And so almost like you're icing a cake, just move it all the way around the surface and coat it. This is also a really fun technique to take old pottery or old glassware and give it some texture and paint it to upcycle some of those thrift store finds. Now that the joint compound is dry, you can see here that really all that is doing is it's adding some texture and depending on the color of the planner that you're using, it's making it a lighter color underneath. And so I'm going to be using a caulking gun and this liquid nails fuse it. So all I'm gonna do is take the caulking gun and put little dots of the glue in random spots all over the surface. It can be a little, it can be a lot. It does not matter if it's messy. This stuff is really sticky and can be kind of hard to work with. I'm gonna be going and putting mine in kind of sporadic places, but eventually I want this thing pretty well covered. Um, some other options for this would be to use the preformed rock backsplash tile sheets that they sell at department stores, but they do get kind of pricey if you're doing a bigger pot, which is why I opted just to use rocks that came out of my driveway for free. And so I'm just placing these on here and I'll continue that process all the way over until these are filled. So here it is, fully covered. You guys can see that it takes a lot of time to get these attached, but this is kind of the look that you're going for. It's okay if you have some gaps here because you'll be filling those in and you're also going to be covering up all of this adhesive. So don't worry about it looking messy. And I'm gonna cover that with this pre-mixed adhesive and grout that I got at the hardware store. Here's what the pre-mixed grout looks like when you open it. This one actually serves as an adhesive as well. So in theory, you could have used this for the base. Um, I just opted for something else with a little more texture. And so there's really no right or wrong way to do it. I'm just kind of slathering that on and pushing that really deep down into the cracks and filling in all of those gaps. I'm gonna work in sections here a little bit. You can wear gloves if you don't like the texture of this on your hands, but you wanna make sure that you're shoving it down into those cracks and crevices because you do want some of that rock to be exposed once you're done. So you don't want it all to just sit there on the top. So once you get a good layer all the way around, go back in and make sure that you're filling in any of the gaps or the exposed adhesive and you'll want to kind of round out your edge too to make it a little bit more like a pot and get a little bit down into the inside there so that when you do have your plants in there that gray isn't showing through as much 
Now that the planter is fully covered, it's time to take it outside and wipe off some of that excess grout. So here I'm just using warm water in a bucket and a sponge and I'm wiping all the way around the surface to get as much as that excess grout off as I can. And you can see the more that you wipe, the more of the rock that you're gonna expose underneath. Now that I've wiped off as much as that excess grout as I can, I'm gonna go back in with just a slightly damp cloth and I'm gonna keep wiping off a little bit more and you can see how that color from the rock is coming through even more. And once I've got it to a point where I feel good about it, I need to set it out in the sun, let it dry and harden, and then the last step will be to go back in and take off some of the haze from the grout on the rock. After you've given the grout enough time to dry, it's time to do the final touch-ups. I'm just taking an almost dry cloth, going back in, and any of the stones that you wanna darken up, just go in and kind of rub the excess off of that. If you're using it outside, I would definitely suggest doing some sort of exterior sealer and put your plan in and you're good to go. Hope you guys have enjoyed this project. Thanks for watching Home Talk. See you next time.